The commander of a Ukrainian mortar platoon, callsign Witch, barks orders to her drone operator, callsign User, on the southern edge of Bakhmut. She needs User to give her eyes on the target so she can tell Pitsumki, one of her mortar operators, it's time. Eyes focused on the monitor, watching, waiting for impact so she can recalibrate for the next volley from her battlefield bunker in this rare view of how Ukrainians on the ground and below it fight the counteroffensive. Our occupation is to defend our infantry, to make the fire in front of our front line. I remember this. We met up with Witch, a Ukrainian lawyer turned warrior in Chasiv Yar, a battle scarred village six miles from Bakhmut, jolted 24 7 by the sound of outgoing Ukrainian artillery. We were just hearing a howitzer right there. That's a big howitzer. Witch directs her fire at the Russians from much closer. That's the marvel of mortars. Their boom may be smaller than artillery but their impact resonates, especially large. Their portability advantageous in a war in which Ukraine's infantry is forced to move by foot, since tanks and other heavy armor would be caught in Russian minefields and artillery traps. We can move very fast with mortar and we can change our position and we can give a fire from different places. Sometimes she plays defense. With our drones we can see the corpses of uh, our enemies and we can count them and we can estimate the success of our combat operations. How successful have you been? If 30 percent of uh, our enemy is dead or injured, that means uh, this unit cannot go forward. That means our work was successful. <laughs> now, in Ukraine's counteroffensive, infantry units count on which to provide them, since there's no air support, their only cover. The work on attack is harder. Harder. And Why? It's more complicated because we are moving forward and we have to be closer to our infantry units and uh, there is not a lot of firing positions. This is not so easy because our ammo is very heavy. And of course the Russians are targeting you. Of course. We are the main target for Russians. It's my job. I like it. What do you like about it? Now for me is a time of revenge. Time of revenge. Exactly. Have you been getting revenge? Yes. Step by step, but we're moving forward. There are many foreign observers to the current counteroffensive. Uh, repeat, please. <laughs> there are many foreign observers to the counteroffensive are saying it's not going well for Ukraine. Mm, yeah, I know. Some people want to see, like in the computer game, it's not like that. A meter by meter, we're going forward. The progress slowed, which explains not just by Ukraine's lack of modern fighter jets, but also because they have far fewer troops and less firepower than the Russians. On Russians, 12 shots, we can answer only three. But we can figure out. We make the bigger intensity of fire. By books, we have one mortar, one group. Now we have two mortars, one group. You're a lawyer? Yes. How do you know about firing mortars? I like math. Artillery is geometry and math. <laughs> will you go back to your former life when the war is over? I don't think I will go back to my previous life. I think I will serve. You want to stay in the military? Yeah, I will stay in the military. I like it. Which, in war, found a world in which she feels more comfortable, better suited to thrive than her former civilian office environment. My friends called me a tank. <laughs> a tank. A tank. <laughs> because if I want to do something, I will do anyways. And in civilian life, that wasn't always ideal. Yeah, in civilian life, so, oh, you are a girl. You are a woman. You have to be more soft. Gender equality in armed forces is better than in civilian life. There's still one part of civilian life that she values more than any other. I'm a mother. I have a seven years old son. Do you ever ask yourself, am I taking too much risk when I'm a mother? I'm asking myself uh, another thing. Uh, as a mother, I 
have to show the good example for my uh, son. I showed my son that uh, the most important thing is freedom and respect of human rights. I have to ask, your call sign, which? I promise I will tell about the story of this call sign, uh, but after war, because it's a little bit dangerous to talk about it now. <laughs> Predictions from where you are on the ground, when is this war going to be over? I don't think that war will be over very soon, because this is a very big process. A long war of attrition, innovation and transformation from mother to warrior, lawyer to mortar unit commander, and citizen to soldier. Jason Bellini, Scripps News in the Donbass region of Ukraine.